This guy, five years. This guy, 10. This guy, also 10? Thanks to mandatory minimum sentencing laws, not everyone thrown in prison is a cold-blooded axe murderer. That's today's BFD. Brain food daily. A mandatory minimum is when a person goes to jail for a set length of time based on the crime they committed. End of story. At first, this doesn't sound like such a bad idea. The judge doesn't even have to think of what the sentence should be. All he has to do is sit down, bang a gavel, and decide what he wants for lunch. I sentence you to 40 calzones. I, I mean years. Years in jail. Ooh, calzone. But that sort of defeats the point of a judicial system. See, judges are supposed to be more than old dudes in wizard cloaks. They're supposed to know how to decide a punishment that fits the unique facts of the case. But thanks to the 1980s war on drugs, punishments for drugs and guns got set in stone. Federal judges were prevented from considering many factors that would likely reduce a sentence. And before you could say, way harsh, bruh, the number of users in jail for possession went from 50k to 400,000. That's an entire fish stadium tour gone. Yeah. Take the case of Chris Wallace, not Biggie. He started growing marijuana in Montana after the state legalized cannabis for medical reasons. Federal agents raided his yurt, and he's now looking at an 80-year mandatory sentence for drug trafficking. For those keeping score at home, that's 50 years more than worst uncle of the year, Jerry Sandusky. Ew. Or how about Stephanie George, also not Biggie. In 1997, she agreed to let her drug-dealing boyfriend hide cash and cocaine in her attic. A crime, surely, but her punishment? Life in prison. That'll teach you to date bad boys. Mandatory minimums don't only apply to drug sentences, though. The second most popular type of minimum sentencing is for gun violence. Though that sounds more reasonable than locking up stoners forever, gun violence isn't without its gray areas. In Florida, a woman named Marissa Alexander fired a warning shot to scare away her abusive ex-husband who had broken into her home. She was sentenced to 20 years in jail because of Florida's mandatory minimum on gun violence, even though the judge said he wished he had more flexibility in sentencing. But he didn't. So yeah, these laws are based on shoddy and outdated principles. Mandatory sentences don't deter criminals, and they keep judges from making the punishment fit the crime. They're undermining our entire judicial system by enforcing a one-size-fits-all policy. Doesn't work in fashion, doesn't work in law. I said it. The fight against mandatory minimums recently scored a huge victory with the passage of SB9 in the California State Senate. It eliminated life sentences without the possibility of parole for juveniles. But this is just one small step in the process of ensuring fair sentences for those convicted of drug and nonviolent offenses. Well, that's it for today's BFD. Be sure to subscribe or go straight to jail, you bunch of potheads. I'm Joe Hartzler. Peace out. Bye, guys.